Hey everyone, welcome into another X-Men 97 recap episode here on the Arena Productions. And in this episode, I have one of our other uh, hosts of the Arena Productions, Burley of Burleman Gaming here. He's a big X-Men 97 fan. He's a he's a child product of the 1990s, and so I'm going to be throwing some questions at him as we recap this episode. So, Burley, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it, shall we? So, Jean Grey, you know, we get Jean Grey in this episode, focusing on her. We get the Goblin Queen. So, I have a question, just like on on the plot development and the characters. So. Uh, the first question I want to throw at you is how how does the introduction of of a clone Jean Grey add complexity to Cyclops's character uh, and his relationship dynamics within the team? Well, now now how the, with this adding in, he's now questioning because he's been with this Jean Grey for however long, having a kid, and then having the one and you have the real Jean Grey come back. It's like are all these feelings that i had for this this other gene gray are they misplaced are they real are they fake what, what's going on it's psychological damaging and, and just helpful yeah and now now he can't he doesn't know what's real so it's kind of hard with you know with the team members <laughs> because you're like you've spent all that time and plus they've spent all this time with this gene gray is it true is this person real not it's just it's just one big mind fuck. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, let's get into the, like the themes and the emotional depth because this was a, a very emotional episode. Uh, okay. So, with with the episode delving into themes of horror, trust, and identity through its action packed and emotionally charged storyline, how does X Men ninety seven episode three, in your opinion, Burley, balance these elements to both entertain and provoke thought among its viewers? I think it does a really good job of balancing these like it has it has you feeling so so much for cyclops just the him having you know him being kind of put in between of choosing between the two genes and you know like having him question everything and everyone question everything it's just this just shows within just these first three episodes alone they show you what really good writers they have and yeah. showing you, getting you, it, making me feel for these characters and these situations. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about the visuals and the animation style. So, uh, so how do you think the episode's visuals, especially during the battle scenes and the horror elements within the X-Mansion, enhance the storytelling and emotional impact of the narrative oh the, the the animation was so well done when the x mansion transformed into that haunted castle yeah and yeah. like it was just like oh my this is just so good and i had this up on the 4k tv yeah. you just see that oh my god it looks so crisp clean great animation on there that nah. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was awesome. Uh, and uh, finally, let's talk a little bit about the series impact uh, and the Marvel Studios direction. So, uh, with X Men ninety seven being hailed as possibly the best Marvel Studios project in the last year, how does Episode three, in your opinion, demonstrate the series' strengths in storytelling, character development, and animation? Well, the a animation that we'll do that one quickly, as we just uh, were saying with the castle, just that how it looked in the transformation, they're really showing that they are taking their time with these animations and spending spending all the time, and I'm assuming the budget that needs for the animation, because mm -hmm. I didn't see anything in any of the animation that was like, oh, that looked cheap, that looked reused, it looked re really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, as for just the story, there's still continuing stuff in episode three. There's continuing a, uh, a like a subplot with Magneto, Rogue, and Gambit. That's still being shown. They're still showing that, and they're still going with it. They're giving you small bits every episode, which I really do do love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just now with what they have happened at the end of episode three with the with uh, Nathan Summers and setting that up. But they're also still going back to stuff at the end of episode two. Storm is back in 
is in a cameo in this episode. They're right. setting stuff up with that, which is great. It's just showing you, hey, we know we're doing, we're focusing mainly on this story here, but we're not forgetting about all the other plot, plot su subplots and stuff we've set up. We're we're slowly moving them forward every episode, so you it makes me feel that okay, they've got confidence in what they're doing and they're writing here. They know they can juggle all this stuff and slowly, not every episode you're going to get everything you want, maybe say, but they're going to slowly move these plot threads forward. Yeah. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's probably the best Marvel show at the moment. And, oh, uh, easy. Easily. Yeah. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the next episode next week. And mm -hmm. uh, we hope all of you here on the arena productions that are watching this, uh, will come back and, uh, Check out our review and uh, recap and breakdown episodes of X-Men 97 as we drop them. And let us know in the comments, what did you think of this episode? And as it moves forward, what do you want to see uh, from X-Men 97? So anyway, I've been your host, Expat, along with my co-host, Burley of Burleyman Gaming. And I want to thank you all for joining us. And uh, we look forward to bringing you another recap episode of X-Men 97. So until the next one, take care, everyone. Peace out. Bye, everyone.